Let's talk about herniated discs. I'm sure if you've been diagnosed with a herniated disc or a bulging disc, you have a lot of questions like, do I need surgery or how will this affect my day-to-day -day life? By the end of this video, you will know what a herniated disc is and how physical therapy can help. My name is Chris Brandt and I'm a physical therapist at EW Motion Therapy. We see a ton of patients with herniated discs and low back pain. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what can cause a herniated disc, what the symptoms are or what the pain looks like and how PT can help. Let's dive right in. So first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how a herniated disc occurs. It's important to know what a disc is. In between each vertebrae or each bony segment of your spine, you have a disc. And that disc is kind of rubbery on the outside and has a jelly-like substance on the inside known as your nucleus. And that disc is used to distribute force in between the bones of your spine. So it's very resilient. But what happens is sometimes we put excessive force on our spine, such as rotation or bending over to pick something up that's too heavy. Sometimes we don't have the strength or stability in our spine to be able to do that. The aging process can sometimes take a toll on your spine and the disc in between by losing some hydration, losing some space, losing that sponginess that allows that force to distribute. And what happens is we get a tear or a rupture, or sometimes just a poking out of that nucleus or that jelly-like substance in the middle of that disc, and it pokes out into our spinal column and can affect the nerves. And that can cause a lot of pain and a lot of the symptoms that we'll talk about here in a second. So in referencing pain when it comes to herniated discs or bulging disc, which is basically a lesser herniated disc, what happens is that jelly-like fluid that we discussed earlier is pushed out of the disc that we talked about and has some pressure or some friction on the nerves on that same level of the spine. And what that can do is cause radiating symptoms down the limbs. So if you were to have a disc herniation in your neck, a lot of times you'll feel pain down the arm. If you have it in your low back, you can feel symptoms going down the leg. Sometimes irritation of your sciatic nerve can cause painful symptoms. If the herniation goes on for too long, you can start to have some issues with balance, some issues with stability, especially if it's affecting your leg. If it's affecting your arm, we can start to see weakness in the hands and difficulty picking stuff up. So in a lot of cases, PT can be very beneficial. Obviously, if you have a disc herniation where you're having significant weakness, you know, over the first two to three days, you're having paresthesia or issues in the saddle area or bowel or bladder problems, that is something that you need to go get taken care of by a doctor immediately. However, if you're just having some symptoms down the leg that come and go, or you feel like, you know, it's just in that back, Physical therapy can be a great option to try and relieve those symptoms without having to have surgery. I want to emphasize that discs can heal or tissues like anywhere else in the body. So what we have to do first is get you in a comfortable position. What we want to be able to do is find a good position for you to be able to relieve that pain. So sometimes if it's in the lumbar, we're going to have you lay on your back. We're going to have you on some heat. We're going to work on some hip mobility to make sure your hips can move a little bit better so your back doesn't have to do as much. And by relieving that pain, we can put you in a better position to start a little bit of what we would call mobility work. So the next part, after we get you comfortable, we're going to then start to work on range of motion. So if it's in your low back, we're going to be looking at you being able to get on and off the bed comfortably. We're gonna be looking at you being able to roll over and stand up. We may even, if you can tolerate, start to figure out how to bend over again. So after you gain that range of motion, the third level is going to be strengthening. Obviously, there was some weakness in the area when that occurred or else it would not have occurred. So what we wanna do is begin to strengthen. If it's in the low back, we're gonna look at your core, make sure that you can properly activate your core, that it's stabilizing when it needs to. We want your glutes to be able to give your low back a lot of support, especially when you're lifting. We'll look at lifting mechanics as well so that this doesn't ever happen again. And those three parts of that sequence are the typical route that physical therapy would take to get you back to your normal 
routine of daily life. Now that you know a little bit more about a herniated disc and how physical therapy can help, it's very important for you to be able to choose the right physical therapist to help guide you on your journey. Click the link in the description below to watch our video on how to choose the right physical therapist. This video will detail all the qualities to look for in a physical therapist to help you along your way. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to help you on your physical therapy and wellness journey.